Welcome back. Right, let's talk more about the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, SSCI subpoena for Donald Trump Jr. Now, Donald Trump Jr. spent many, many hours before that committee. But the chair of that committee, Richard Burr from North Carolina, senator, is subpoenaing Donald Trump Jr. again. And many Republicans are very, very upset with this. Burr's own colleagues. Now, it's looking more and more like Richard Burr is going down the Jeff Flake Bob Corker Road, lining with Democrats over Republicans. But another North Carolina senator, Tom Tillis, who typically does vote with the more centrist wing of the party, broke with Senator Burr. He said the Mueller report completely vindicated Donald Trump Jr. This was his tweet from Senator Tillis. Case closed, exclamation point. The Mueller report has cleared Donald Trump Jr. and the Dems are now making this all about politics. Let's move on and get to work on the real issues facing America. But this is a rare moment for Senator Tillis, who has, as I noted, typically gone to the center and hasn't really been a great fan of President Trump. That's where I want to welcome in our next guest, Garland Tucker. Garland is challenging Tom Tillis in the GOP Senate primary next year. Garland, good to see you. Thank you. Great to be here. All right. So Tillis, a popular guy. He's got a big war chest. He's an incumbent senator. Regardless of him swinging over to the center, often voting alongside Dems, cutting those backroom deals. He's got a lot of name recognition in the state. What makes you jump in and think you have a chance in the primary? Well, I think uh, he's probably not uh, such a popular fellow within the state, uh, certainly among Republicans. Uh, his record there uh, over the last six years has not been particularly conservative, in spite of the fact that he ran on a solid conservative platform back in 2014. So uh, my thought is that there is uh, there is a good bit of discontent in North Carolina in the base. Uh, we intend to fight this uh, primary battle out on the issues, and um, we'll see. We think uh, Senator Tillis is pretty vulnerable on the issues. Now, uh, Garland, how about in the general election? I mean, your state elected Roy Cooper. Roy Cooper slid far to the left. I had dealt with him quite a bit when he was attorney general in North Carolina. He's come pretty far left since his AG days as governor of the state. In a statewide election, is North Carolina moving blue? Can a Republican still win the U.S. Senate seat there? Well, I think the answer to that is certainly yes. Uh, North Carolina is a purple state. There's no question uh, in 2020, uh, the dominant factor in the, uh, in the general election is going to be President Trump. And my feeling right now, if the election were held today, I think Trump would pretty easily carry the state. Uh, I think that's going to I think that's going to be helpful to whoever the Republican nominee is, whether it's Tom Tillis or me or someone else. Um, and I think the uh, Republican base in North Carolina remains uh, basically very conservative. Yeah, look, I, I tend to agree with you on that. So conservative review popular website, they do a rating of every politician in the country. They give them what they call their liberty score. And it's pretty thorough, pretty comprehensive. And Tom Tillis did horribly. He received an F from conservative review. He was uh, considered 62% liberal, 38% conservative with his voting record. So is this really the crux of your primary challenge, that, that Tom Tillis is a rhino Republican in name only? and that he can't be trusted to be a solid conservative for Republicans in the state? That's absolutely the crux. If, um, if Tillis had lived up to the platform that he ran on in 2014 and was running for re-election today, I wouldn't be running against him. I'd be supporting him. Uh, but he has not delivered on that 2014 platform. And uh, we, uh, we think there's a real opening here. All right, so let's talk about his tweet, because Tillis and Burr, they're good friends, they're old friends. Tillis has often moved left, right? We, we see that in his words and his actions. We see that in CR's Liberty score. But he sided with the president and Donald Trump Jr. with regards to Burr's subpoena for the Senate Intelligence Committee. They want Donald Trump Jr. to come back in. A lot of backlash among conservatives. The Mueller report exonerated him. He's already spent hours upon it, dozens of hours testifying before the House and Senate, these committees. Do you think that Tillis truly believes the Mueller report vindicated Donald Trump Jr., or was his tweet a political move to get, uh, uh, gin up support among the Trump base? Well, I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, as you look at, uh, 
as you look at Tillis's record, uh, he's uh, certainly the recent flip flop in March. It was hard to tell what his real belief was there. Um, the op ed indicated that he just could not support Trump in building the wall under the Emergency Powers Act on principle. And then uh, a week or so later, under some real pressure from the folks back home, he um, he flipped on that issue. So, you know, on this one, I'm, I'm not sure. I think um, conservatives tend to believe that the uh, Mueller report should have closed the book on the investigation. And I think uh, Tillis was right in what he said about that. I certainly support that. Yeah. I mean, it looks like he's walking a tightrope to me, right? I mean, I do this for a living. I've got to analyze these situations on micro and macro levels every day. And to me, it looks like uh, Tillis walking a tightrope. He's got to move to the right to win his primary, but he's got to move back to the Senate to win that very purple state. Can a candidate do that? Because it sure seems to me like he's given his primary challenger a lot of ammunition to use against him, while at the same time, given his Democratic opponent a ton of uh, uh, oppo and information to use against him. So is there any position he can take that'll benefit him? Well, uh, my feeling is that a candidate, when he runs for office, should run on his principles and uh, state what those principles are. If he gets elected, he should go to Congress and uh, vote that way. And I think Tillis got elected in North Carolina on a conservative platform, but particularly when it came to uh, immigration and spending, he has not voted in line with that platform. And I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with the platform he ran on. I think the problem is his voting record. And that's what we're, uh, that's what we want to make this race all about. It's not personalities. It's not, you know, Senator Tillis's personality. It's his voting record. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, it's a sound strategy. All right. So you're a relatively political unknown on the national uh, scale. What's your background? What, what, what made you jump into this race? Why are you, would you be qualified to represent North Carolina in the United States Senate? Well, I grew up in eastern North Carolina, and I've, uh, I've been a business man all my career. I was CEO of three companies here in Raleigh. And uh, about 10 years ago, I wrote a couple of books uh, on politics and history. I've always been a, a history buff and a student of politics. And... So I've been interested in, in politics, but have never before decided to run. The reason I'm running in this race is uh, I've been very disappointed in Senator Tillis. I was a supporter of his back in 2014. I think he ran on a good platform. I was very pleased when he won, when he beat Senator Kay, uh, Kay Hagan. But uh, I've been disappointed. He hasn't delivered. And the, the two issues that I think are going to dominate this race are immigration and spending, and that's where I have the main differences with Senator Tillis and his record. Garland Tucker, Republican primary candidate for U.S. Senate in the great state of North Carolina. Garland, good luck with your race. Good to see you. Great. Thanks for having me on. Have a good day. All right, coming up, I'm going to give you my take on these establishment Republicans trying to take down the president. Take